welcome back uh, here in this video we're going to show you how to shine up the uh, my opinion the best shoe for mirror shine the classic black cap toe shoe this particular pair is the chelsea from edward green so uh, this is an exciting shoe to work on these are really high end and they use uh, only the top quality leathers so this is going to be a fun video and hopefully give you guys some tips and tricks on how to maintain the highest shine possible on your own black shoes as you can see these are brand new out of the box never been worn uh, except for a try on by the customer so we're uh, just going to go ahead and we're going to undo the knot here and we're going to tuck those laces down into the tongue so we're not getting them coated in wax After we get those laces tucked away, we're going to use just a soft brush. And uh, this one here, this is a horsehair brush from Paul Brungard Products. If you're needing a new brush, check them out on my website. They really make some of my favorite brushes. But we're just going to do this over these shoes. Uh, they are brand new. We're going to knock off some of that dust from sitting, um, making sure that we are cleaning out that area around the welt where dust can sometimes collect. Just to make sure we have a nice, clean surface to work with before we start applying wax. On a new shoe, what you want to look for is that line where that toe puff starts. So that's what I was pointing out there, is you can kind of see where that, that stiffener is, or where that stops. You want to make sure that you don't take your shine too far past that, or you'll start seeing cracking. For black shoes, I always use a navy wax, and right now I am out of any pigmented mirror gloss, so I'm using neutral until I'm able to get that replaced. But before we start building up any crazy layers of wax with the mirror gloss, we're going to use Pat Deluxe. You'll see I'm just going to go ahead and start doing a nice thin layer over the whole shoe. This is to fill in some of those pores of the leather all the way around. And uh, this will give a nice glow throughout the shoe so it doesn't look uh, really odd when you have a really high shine toe and really sh high shine heel. And the rest of the shoe looks kind of drab and dull. Uh, but also it does give uh, just a very light uh, layer of water resistance it doesn't make them waterproof by any means uh, but it does make sure that those pores are filled in so they're not absorbing any uh, water or anything that you might spill on them typically when i get a pair of shoes in for shine i would do conditioning and polish but these shoes uh, were were made to order and they were uh, delivered directly to the customer after having them made so the leather wasn't dried out or anything uh, you can kind of see that just basing on looking at the shoe that the way that they creased when he tried them on that they were in good shape and they didn't need a, any conditioner or polish again we're going to take this pat deluxe and we're going to do it all over the entire shoe make sure you get down by the welt as well that's an often overlooked area and just rub it in once you get one shoe put to the side start working on the next shoe uh, that allows the waxes on the first shoe to begin drying uh, so you're not just spreading it around but allowing it to sit and kind of set a little bit again you'll see i do use my fingers for applying the waxes uh, this is multi-purpose but really the main thing is um, it forms that wax up so that it's really getting pushed down into the leather and not just sitting on top of it but the uh, the friction of my skin with the leather warms up that wax enough to really make sure that it's getting into the leather which is what we want when we start building up our layers for the mirror shine gotten some wax layers on there you want to brush it off again we're using a horsehair brush and this is going to start showing a nice uh, medium or even low level shine and we're just trying to build up some of those layers and buff off that excess wax and this will help give us a really great starting point before we start building up any layers of wax for our mirror shine so go ahead and just buff it again it's not really 
pressure that you want, but you want to just be moving very quickly over the surface of the leather. Make sure you're getting in that welt again. You don't want to leave uh, excess waxes. And then what I do is I go over them with a softer bristle. This one here, this is Yak Hair, also from Paul Brungard. One of my favorite brushes, especially when working with mirror shines, because it doesn't scratch the mirror shine even when I'm done. That's why uh, some of these softer bristle brushes can be called finishing brushes. I know Boot Black makes one out of goat hair, which is also very nice. Uh, so if you're looking for something, this is great. One of those soft bristle brushes is great for maintaining your shoes in between shines. Uh, you can, you know, when you put your shoes up, you get them back out to wear them again. If they've got a light layer of dust or something on them, you can hit them with that really soft bristle brush. You don't have to worry about scratching your mirror shine, rather just brush, uh, brushing that dust off. Again, you'll see I'm not trying to go down for pressure or anything like that, just making sure that we're getting all of that wax buffed off, that excess taken off of there. So we're just moving real quick back and forth. Again, making sure we're getting inside of that welt line where that waste is so we're not missing any excess wax that could build up and create issues for us in just a bit. brushing off that first layer over the entire shoe we're going to start building up our wax layers on the toe and heel we're going to do this using um, a harder wax so in this particular case i am using saphir mirror gloss uh, if you're using another brand this would be like in pure polish this would be your high shine paste if you're using boot black this would be your mirror shine if you're using paul brungard this would be your spit shine uh, whatever brand you're using they all operate pretty similarly, but this is going to be your hard wax. You're going to want to go ahead and start using that. Make sure you get the entire surface, and you're going to want to do quite a few layers of this. One of the biggest issues that people have is they don't do enough layers of this, especially initially. When they start buffing, they get dry spots, which is actually where the water starts seeping into the leather and then it's impossible to get a mirror shine after that and you have to let the leather dry back out so make sure that you're getting enough layers established on the shoe before you start buffing you can do this based on the number of layers i recommend i recommend using more of a time so i try to do this for at least three minutes building up wax when i was practicing for the u.s shoe shine championship i was applying wax for five minutes before i started buffing and that was just to ensure that you're getting that uh, nice clear reflection faster so make sure you build up those layers of wax especially when you're using a, a neutral wax like this you don't have to worry about the pigments starting to uh, smear or create haze you can just really put those wax layers on and then uh, after you get some good waxes built up on the toe go ahead move to the heel again uh, you want to try to taper this so you're going to see i'm going to fill in the area that's on the counter so you don't want to put this wax too high uh, but you want to make sure that you're keeping it on that stiffener on that heel counter and then you do want to taper it so don't just block it off it'll look kind of odd uh, you want to fade it and you'll see i'm doing that here where i'm tapering it down from the back of the heel towards the middle of the shoe it's kind of going in like a wedge and then i'm going to connect that with just a, a singular line along that well line you don't want to build this up too much it'll still crack and then it'll look uh, less desirable but if you just put a, an extra couple of layers along that well line it'll connect the two shines it'll actually build in um, some tapering too so your shine will look more consistent all the way throughout the shoe
those wax layers built up and they're able to sit for a few seconds we're going to go ahead and move into our buffing so this is where it's really important to have the right cloth i'm using one of my levi's shoe shine high shine claws you can get one of those on my website or shoot me a dm and i can get you one uh, but these are 100 percent cotton with a very dense weave and a soft hand which really lead to those really uh, really clear and high shines that you guys are here for so uh, find something that's 100 percent cotton you don't really want anything else in there spandex can become scratchy uh, so you want something that's pure cotton and i prefer something with a softer hand and then something that's not too thick i know some people prefer to shine with uh, flannel but to me it holds too much water and creates problems so this has become my go-to cloth and uh, my favorite fabric but for this you'll want your pat deluxe and some water and a good cloth and you'll see i'm just going to start uh, buffing the pet deluxe that i was using was kind of dry and old so you see here i opened up a newer one and i am dragging a little bit you're not necessarily supposed to do that but both of my uh, navy pet deluxes are drying out so the solvents aren't there as much so i do drag it just a little bit to make sure i'm picking up those solvents but you just want to go ahead and keep buffing and uh, if you start noticing right there i got some lint on there that'll cause swirls so you want to pull that off if you see it but just uh, make sure that you're consistently gliding if you start feeling your rag catch or drag uh, that means you're actually pulling wax off of the shoe so keep going back and forth between your wax and your water just want a little water just enough to keep your rag uh, damp and then just enough wax to keep your rag moving you'll see um, even even though i do drag a little bit on the wax i'm still not picking up a whole lot you're not wanting to bring up a whole lot of wax with you you're just wanting to get enough so those solvents keep buffing and uh, glissaging that wax and you'll see here it starts to cloud up after i get a little bit of wax on there but then it'll clear up and then i'll get a little bit more water a little bit more wax you just want to keep doing this until you start getting that desired level of shine uh, if you feel like you've got uh, too much wax or too much water you can move to a different section of your cloth which is what i'm doing here you want to just make sure that you're moving to a clean section of your cloth pull it nice and tight you don't want that falling out on you and you want to make sure that uh, you've got a nice flat uh, you don't want any wrinkles on that buffing section what i'm doing here is i'm using just a little bit of mirror gloss to speed up the buffing process you don't want to use too much of it because it is a drier wax um, and it can start pulling some of the waxes off but here i'm just going to use it to dry up some of the solvents a little bit and go right back to buffing with that pad deluxe important throughout your buffing process to keep an eye on the areas that you're shining if you start noticing areas that don't have wax uh, be careful not to use too much water in those areas as you'll start to develop some dry spots where the leather absorbs the water so just keep an eye on the wax you'll notice i pause momentarily a few times just to take a look at the area that i'm shining see if there's any areas that have too much wax build up or not enough and then you can always you finish buffing and you see an area that needs some more wax you can always take that rag off and go ahead and add a few more layers of wax so I went back and I found a couple of spots that had too much wax and some spots that didn't have enough wax and make sure that you to keep it even I uh, went back and I did a couple more layers you can see uh, the wax is built up there again so built up a few more layers of wax and went straight back into buffing this is the primary part of a mirror shine is it's just repetition and it's just ensuring that you're getting those wax layers built up and that you're buffing them off to get that nice clear shine.
starting to get a nice mirror shine here and uh, that waxes are they're glissaging over really nicely and you can see that reflection even with the cloudiness of uh, the waxes there that haven't been buffed off completely you can see how reflective it's becoming so this is really just repetition you just got to keep going find joy in the process and it'll become much more enjoyable to you if all you're shooting for is that end goal it can become rather boring when you've gotten to a good point what you want to do is you want to go ahead and move to a clear section of your cloth and uh, just get a little bit of water and you can see how little wax was on my cloth and you want to just buff really quickly uh, i do primarily in straight lines and what this is is this is kind of that finishing step this is important this will get any of those swirls out of your shine that you get from doing the circle motion buffing and using just enough wax and just enough water to make sure that you are um, you're not stripping the wax layers off but rather that you're just buffing them down and the quick motions really build up enough friction and heat to get a really nice reflection over the entire shoe so this is really important to get that top level mirror shine that people want if you skip this, you can still have a nice reflection, but it won't give you that really clear mirror-like glass finish. There you go. Uh, even in poor light and in a phone, you can see the phone's reflection pretty well in that toe and even around into the heel. So that's what we're looking for there. Have a great shine, clear reflection, and then when you get it outside in natural lighting, you'll see how good that looks.